Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the Sandy no, F1... No, 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 we're not doing that. No, no jokes. No? This is the snappy preview episode. We're getting straight into it. None of your nonsense. Do the intro. What's what's happening? This is this is the this is the way now. We do two shows. We do one where it's rambly and unprofessional, and then this one where it's sharp, tight, and unprofessional. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peer, and for once we are looking ahead. Gone are the days where we would sneer cynically at the race just gone, and instead we're going to sneer cynically at the race ahead. The Bahrain Grand Prix opens up the 2024 season, so listen as we gaze into our crystal balls. Do we see Max Verstappen staring back? There's no Christian Horner. What could that mean? That's all to come. Let's start by passing the hard work on to you, our wonderful and financially generous listeners. Hint, hint. Uh, we asked you for questions and questions you have asked. So we'll pick some live and answer them. And we'll see if it's funny or not. So here goes. Who wants to start? OK, shall I start then? Uh, yeah, let's pick. I'm going to pick one at absolute random. Let's go to the Instagram. A underscore J underscore MCC, who says, what will be the first race for somebody to seriously suggest Perez is being replaced by Ricardo? Oh. Uh, Monaco. That seems quite a long way away. I think it all depends on whether we get the Sergio that started last season or the Sergio that ended last season. Because he won a race at the start of last year, didn't he? Did he? I, yeah, I he find did. that hard to believe. No, he did. I know. It's, it's nuts, isn't it? Um, but he did. And he was quite good to start with. And then he just, he absolutely bottassed it. Uh, fairly quickly. So if he's if he's still in bottassing it mode, I don't think it'll be very long at all. I think it'll be a few races, and probably even maybe by Monaco he might be gone. But if he's got his act together and starts doing an impression of somebody who knows how to drive the car, then he'll be all right for a bit. Thoughts? Well, the question is when when will they be when will we seriously talking about it? And we are already. Yeah. So now. So now. Next question. Uh, Terry, go on. You pick one. Can I pick one from Facebook? You can. This is like a box of chocolates, isn't it? It is. Laugh is like a box question. of chocolates. Like it. Tim Renler says the Alonso and Aston Lovin didn't implode spectacularly last season, but sure it's only a matter of time. Alonso only has so much filter, so when and how would it all implode? Well, we briefly mentioned it in the last episode, but mm. to go into more I don't detail, remember. <laughs> I mean, it's a long time. It was several <laughs> days ago that we recorded, so it's fine. Uh, it was today. Um, I think... Again, it's going to come down to how good the car is and how quickly they develop it um, and how much Alonso decides he wants that Mercedes seat and what happens with that. I think if Mercedes announce somebody quite early on, which they mm. probably won't, then I think he'll just get on with it and just be like, ah, it's fine, I'm out of here at the end of the year anyway, assuming it's him. But if he's desperately trying to prove himself as Toto Wolff's new favourite son, I think it could get quite fractious. Which will be exciting. It will, but it's so weird with Alonso because he is he's like this perfect balance of like really, really, really good, like proper top tier driver, but he's such a dick so much of the time. <laughs> and he makes such bad choices that mm. he's alienated half the paddock. And I I really don't know whether it's gonna go. Like if I was a team boss, I don't think I'd want him. Good as he is. I'd be just be like, is it worth the hassle that will almost definitely come with it? it? While it hasn't happened at Aston yet, you can't yes. help thinking that it is going to. I feel if I was a team boss, but I knew I was in my last year, I'd get him in for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> or just to fuck the guy after you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you've got Alonso starting next week. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> yeah, I'm off to my yacht. Yeah, we put the uh, hinges for the doors in that cupboard. <laughs> You'll need a few. <laughs> uh, it'll be entertaining, whatever happens. Okay, uh, I've got a question here uh, from Twitter, from Rolando Bravium, which sounds like a... Sounds like an element. Uh, why do you think Piastri will absolutely destroy baby Lando? I don't. No, I don't think he's going to absolutely destroy him. No. I don't think, I think any of us me- have said that. I, I have not think, said that. well, what I do think, because I seem to remember last year I said that he'd be the next world champion after um, Verstappen, but I've, in, fact, in my defence, I've been drinking quite a lot. <laughs> um, I, don't, I, mean, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I think Piastri is really, really good. Mm. And now that he's got his rookie season out of the way, he was exceedingly close to Lando last year for most of the season. And Lando's had quite a few years in F1 now. And Lando's really good. So I think if Piastri uh, you know, can na- uh, get all those rookie mistakes and, and get all the extra learning in, I think he's going to be shit hot. I don't think he's going to destroy him because I think Lando's really good. But I think he could, maybe not this year, but 
potentially next year if they're still teammates. I think he could start getting the upper hand. Maybe sooner, but it wouldn't surprise me if it turns out that Piastri, in his ultimate form, is better than Lando in his ultimate form. Sometimes I feel like we're talking about Muppet Babies. (laughs) It's a lot like that. (laughs) Like, F1 Babies. Like, when did we stop talking about Kimi Raikkonen and... Last Alonso. year when he retired. But he's yeah. probably going to come back. <gasps> he's going to get the Mercedes seat. Oh, I would love Kimi Antonelli. <laughs> it's not Kimi Antonelli. It's Kimi Raikkonen. Or Mika Hakkinen. <laughs> Let's get Mika Hakkinen in. <laughs> Just one la- Nigel Mansell comes back for one last go. All the old guys. <laughs> They do a Have I Got News For You and just have a different yeah. driver every week. I mean, there's, the there's of the loads season. of them that are still alive, so it's fine. I think if the car is decent, I think Lando's going to do well. I think Lando's got a bit of a grub. I think he was so used to beating Ricardo. I think actually it's in his head that's going to be Lando's problem. It's going to be his head. Or do you think Lando thought he was maybe better than he is, even though yeah. I do think he is really good? Yeah. He doesn't well, you like, would doesn't like the if your teammate had won races and then utterly collapsed in front of you. You would mm-hmm. that would go to your head, wouldn't it? If you were if um, you were Ricardo's team, Piastri has won a race as well. He won a, it was a sprint it race. Doesn't Italy. count. That's like it me saying I've won a race. Well, I'm, Lando, Lando hasn't won a sprint race. Piastri's good. won one. I'm wishing Piastri very well this season, I, and I think he I think he's going to do well, but I don't think he's going to smash Lando no, Norris. I think smashing destroying is 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 too much. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, next question, Phil. Uh, my next question. Uh, th- this is one because we. I, I should point out on this on this uh, Q and A thing, we are welcoming any questions. It doesn't even have to be about F one. So on that thing from Instagram, Nat Sidko says, "What's your most unusual accomplishment in life?" Uh, I auditioned for the Milky Bar Kid. Whoa, really? Did, yeah. Did you get it? No. Oh. It's not really an accomplishment, then, is it? It's quite well, a failure. <laughs> you should have seen the queue. I mean, it was long. You know, so I queued up there, got on the stage, did my thing. So that's then... like saying if there was a queue at Tesco's and you queued up, and then <laughs> when they interviewed you when you came out, you went, yeah, I didn't buy anything. Do you know what? I'm going to change my biggest uh, unusual accomplishment in life. I watched an entire Instagram video today about the top 10 biggest Tesco's in the UK. I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> what wins it? Do you know, I've forgotten because, <laughs> because the only reason I was watching it is because I used to live in Slough and I knew that Slough had one of them. And it was fucking fifth. Fifth the in the Tesco. list. Shit. Wow. What's the biggest big to- Tesco? What's the- I forgot the biggest we've got, one. We've got one. Burgess Hill is the nearest one to me. Oh, was that on I there? liked him in the shard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Terry? What, where's my biggest Tesco? No. <laughs> what's your most unusual accomplishment in life? Um... Well, I used to always have a twofold one, which is that I am in a James Bond film, which is always very Oh, yeah. No, that's funny. fucking great. Mm. And Barack Obama follows me on Twitter was always my second one. But then I deleted my Twitter account by accident. Oh, no. And then when I reinstated it, I'd lost all my followers. Oh, and, it's, and Barack's it's, not back. It's just really sad. And I'm tempted to just message him and be like, I know you're busy. But <laughs> I used to really dine out he's, on the fact that... He's not as busy me. as he used uh, to be. I wonder what I he know. followed you off the back of. Like, what did you say that made him think, yeah, I think he loves this, this podcast. I think he probably read that episode of Time Out in about 2010 or whatever it was, when you were highlighted as a up-and-coming comedian. One of the top 10 comedians in the UK, you mean? There you go. That's the yeah. one. That, no, there's another accomplishment. I was one of the top 10 comedians in the UK. That's pretty good. That is a good one. According to Time Out London, which is but no mean thing. What I remember from that is that I was ninth. And Lee Evans was 10th. And that night, I had to go through the O2 where he was playing so I could get a bus to my gig that was paying me 70 quid. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, hilarious. No, I think that means, officially, you are better than Lee Evans. I think yeah. that's fine. I mean, look how, you know, look how popular Michael McIntyre is, and I don't rate him yeah. at all. But anyway, good. What about you, Phil? Yeah, got, yeah, what about you? I've, I was thinking about this earlier, and I've actually done quite a few random things that I would rate. So... um. I've played in an orchestra in the Royal Albert Hall. Oh, wow. And played I was with? In. In. What, you were just jerking them off? <laughs> kind of shows that you're going to see at the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> They're quite diverse oh, sorry, these I'm, days. I'm going to a different venue called the Prince Albert. Sorry, very different. <laughs> no, I was, uh, when I was a kid, I was quite musical. I was in the National Children's Orchestra. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. When you say quite musical, what did you play? Viola. Have you still got one? Yeah. You used Go to play it. that. I mean, it's somewhere in the cupboard. 
Mm. Oh, I'm not going to play because my daughter's asleep, so I'm not going to play. Also, oh, I haven't yeah. practiced in about five years. But um, so that was one. And the other. That What's your favourite my... note? Oh, C. Oh, god, he's a classic. Good. It's just he's a classic. Good, he's not he's, bullshit. Yeah, he's not bullshit at all. <laughs> well, the odds that he'd say C. Oh, I don't know C. I like semi quavers. You know, the whole shebang. I love um, too. And the other one is that uh, in 1999, <laughs> I was 12th in the newcomer division of the British Inline Skating Championships. Ugh. See, I feel like I should have said something good rather than watching a Tesco video. <laughs> oh, no, no. We've got your number now on. <laughs> uh, next question. Terry. Um, Guy Boucher. Boucher. Guy Boucher. Guy Boucher. Guy Boucher. Guy Boucher. <laughs> Guy Boucher. Says, do you guys still hate George Russell? He's a good British bloke, isn't he? Well, what does that mean? I mean, I, 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 I it's not all of us that hate George Russell. No. I, I don't really have a problem right, with George right. Russell. Let's step back. Let's step back. Let's step back. Mm. If someone said to you, yeah. can you tell me a good British bloke? Who would you say? What's the archetype we're aiming for? Ooh. Churchill? Oh, no, Greg no. Wallace? Very problematic, Churchill. Probably someone Leslie on Grantham. the Antiques Roadshow. I've interviewed Leslie Hugh Grantham. Scully. Um, Leslie Grantham's a convicted murderer. Bob Mortimer. Bob Mortimer. Bob Mortimer. Yes. Bob, Bob Mortimer. Mortimer. There we go. Is a good British bloke. There's right? a yes. benchmark. That's so good. if you're comparing George Russell to Bob Mortimer, George Russell. I'm sorry, <laughs> George Russell, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was ninth, <laughs> ninth in the country. <laughs> um, <laughs> suck it, Lee Evans. <laughs> Where's your George Russell Bob pulling Mortimer material? That, yeah, pulling out that gold material. Amazing. <laughs> You're way less sweaty than him as well. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. But, um... <laughs> anyway, I still hate George Russell. I'm going to enjoy watching him. Yeah, we don't all hate him. If you come to the show, why do you hate him? Look at him. No, we, <laughs> we did have... like a, a prick. Yeah, we did have a thing about... Particularly his sort of opening sequence on the on the Sky's coverage of... Oh, the... Yeah, we, that was... Well, he just looks like a... To be honest, the reason I hate him is also the reason why I love him, because he's perhaps the most British you can be, which is just ever so slightly misplaced arrogance. Like, he's good, <laughs> mm. but he's not quite as good as he thinks he is. Yeah. It's like the Adam Partridge effect, you know? It's just like there's something... It's maybe there. like ninth. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> No, 15 years we've known each other, Phil. <laughs> Battery numbers. <laughs> Is it 15 years? <laughs> I can't remember your name most of the time. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I, I I, mean, you know, I wouldn't say George Russell is my favourite, but he, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, well, no, no. Okay, His eyes you've, are a you, bit big. You've both got to hate a... Which, which driver of this year's drivers would you hate if you had a... If, it's, if this was a democracy... <laughs> Like if 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 they were all lined up in front of me and I had to punch one of them full in the face. Not punch, just slap. which driver likely if, slap. Which driver do you like the least? Let's make it nice. Let's make it positive. Which one mm. do you not do you dislike? Uh. <laughs> I've got a weird, slightly cop outy answer in that, and we've talked about this before. In that, I just I don't feel like I know anything about him. Is Joe Guanyu? Mm. Like I don't have a problem with him. I just I feel like I have no idea what he's like. You're... I feel like you should make an effort. I think if this was a school bully situation and I'm like, yeah. I'm beating up like the kid in the wheelchair or something and then Ollie's beating <laughs> up someone because of where they come from and you're just like, I just don't know anything about this one. It's like, what is up to you to go and find about out? We've got reasons one. for our hatred. Yeah, but you were a bit like, oh, Joe Guan Yu, you know, just something about him. Come on. Yeah, you come on. Phil. It's, you yeah, know. Well, he drives for Salbert. <laughs> kick, <laughs> steak, has. Because he's kick. literally got kick written on him. Yes. <laughs> But oh, they should just have... got a mullet, so I let him off. They should put kick me on the back of the car, shouldn't they? Okay, next question. I've uh, got a couple here, actually. I'm just going to bundle them into one. Jenny and Ralph Brynard. Uh, hey. The question we all want to know is Chica coming back? And uh, Matt Labden, uh, in all seriousness, how much longer is it really going to last without Chica? I, it, I don't know if to take this personally pretty, or not. Pretty harsh that you're reading these out. Um, yeah. I mean, she but... was better. It's just, you know, it's harsh, isn't it? I don't want to... I don't want to discuss this. I love Chica the Bits, but she's dead to us. Yeah. But um, that Jenny and Ralph comment on Facebook has been, it's been written, the question we want to know, blah, 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 by Jenny and Ralph Brynard. But the comment is coming from someone called Joe Berg. And I think... Don't out him. It might be but I think him. Jenny or Ralph is having an affair. <laughs> 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 and they've, they've drunkenly, post-coitally, after a few glasses of wine, picked up the iPad, done a funny comment to the podcast... 
from the wrong account. The from wrong, the wrong account. account. Oh. It's like Ian Botham searching for porn all over again. Oh dear. Is that a thing? Remember when Ian Botham tweeted a post of his a picture of his penis? Did, yes, I do <laughs> I remember it because it is yeah. forever imprinted he in my brain. Tweeted a picture of Beefy. Do yeah. not search it I'm not under search any it. circumstances. Oh dear. It's horrendous. That's worse than Ed Balls. Uh, uh, yeah, that is um, very funny though. Ch- I mean, I, I would love it if Chica, but Chica is always welcome in this parish, penis. shall we say? But she is, um, Warning. she's busy. Here is she's got a life. Sausage pick. <laughs> Picture of him both of them, so you know. Are you sure? And also, if she's listening to this, I doubt she wants to come back. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly oh, steers more the, towards talking about cocks. He wrote a tweet that he wrote what he thought he was texting someone was what are you thinking question mark xx and it's a picture of his dick but it's taken from if you're holding the phone like between your legs this is good like a selfie this is good <laughs> this is no that's a different cricketer <laughs> <laughs> oh. what was he doing there <laughs> <laughs> he was holding the tripod <laughs> what are you thinking he was the tripod. Uh, yeah no it's disgusting don't look at it uh but no i don't know how long it's going to last without chica i've got no idea how long has it been going already i mean it's about a year Uh, actually like just how long has it been going just too long probably since 2015 so we're on a 10 year anniversary next year when lewis hamilton finally goes to ferrari we can stop this nonsense (laughs) (laughs) we were just a think tank campaigning for lewis hamilton (laughs) next question I'm still looking at you both of his penis. <laughs> <laughs> and weirdly, I've got it on my screen next to this chat, and it's his. It's the same size as our faces. <laughs> Why have you got two penises? What? No, next to our what? chat. Oh, I thought he <laughs> said chat. next. I thought he said next to this chap. I was like, what are you looking at two cocks? I've got a grinder <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> it's got a couple of cocks on your screen. I mean. You could argue that the people watching on YouTube have got... Yeah, anyway. Why are we uh, still talking about screen? Ian? Shall I share my screen on YouTube? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Final question. Last question. I don't want to talk about his cock. Whose turn is it? My turn? I can't have lost track. Okay. Uh, final question. Uh, I'll pick this one from uh, Evan Kempe. Uh I think because I've slightly misformatted the script document. Uh, he says, give us other methods to support, not PayPal and surely not Gunter t-shirts. Well, Evan, we have both good news and bad news. The bad news is that the Gunter t-shirt still lives. But Terry, there's good news as well. Yes, you can support the podcast by uh, sliding a 20 euro note under my front door. Not a euphemism. No, no. Or... Oh, oh you, can, you can buy t-shirts. Uh, you can... <laughs> You can rent um, boys. <laughs> I was going to see one of you had like an Airbnb portfolio. Um, Guys, we've got a pub. We've got a pub. Plug the pub. Or you could Plug come the to the pub. The pub. Yes. Which the is pub. called? We studied a pub called the Whinging Mustache. Was it? It's not. Yes, yet. it's called the Whinging Mustache. And we've got uh, a pub called the Whinging Mustache. And what is a pub called the Whinging Mustache? I hear you are. It's not a real pub. It's not a real pub, and we haven't got a license to sell alcohol. We won't be selling alcohol. But if you come to the pub, you will listen to the podcast without adverts, mm. which yeah. is a weird thing, isn't it? Because we they're, they're annoying, but they're not if you're not, because we like the money <laughs> that they give us. But we also like the money you give us more. But we do love the advertisers, so thank you, advertisers. We yeah. also, oh, God. We just, <laughs> we'd it's like money. Wrong. No, but it's, it's untainted money. It hasn't been tainted by ads. So not that, not that adverts are tainting anything, no. because we love them. Yes, we love the adverts. partners. But we also, but the, just give us your money. <laughs> Slide made all over again. <laughs> Come to the, but look, we've got extra material is what we're saying. You get ad free, yes. you get ad free stuff. Imagine if Bob Geldof was talking about Live Aid and then he went, and then you, you use this to shave your balls. <laughs> Uh, kids starving in Africa, but oh, do you know what? I just, I just feel fresher. I'll never know the smooth feeling. Um, For only forty nine ninety nine, you can help a child in Africa and have clean balls. You, you get ad free nonsense. You get uh, exclusive stuff, including interviews, possibly mm. extra episodes, possibly early access to episodes. Oh no, we haven't fully. It's, it's, it's a soft opening, but we'd love to have you along. But also, what would you like? Yeah, oh, tell us. Yeah. Tell us what if you're you going like. to chuck us, 
I mean, let's be honest, the cost of a pint, maybe even less. Can't remember how much it is. Uh, per month, what do you want for your money? Let us yeah, know. what would you want? If you do want to uh, join the pub, and we would love to see you there, uh, you just sign up through Apple Podcasts. You can head to our page and you'll see the link to join, or you can donate a one-off pint, all three, to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Now it's time to peer into the future. Uh, the next race is the first race, and it's the Bahrain Grand Prix in Bahrain on Saturday. Here with everything you need to know is Phil Tromans with the FF1S Preview. Ooh. It is 20 years since we had the very first Bahrain Grand Prix, and dare we say it, it's the best of the Middle East tracks, which admittedly is not a very high bar. This weekend's race is on a Saturday because of the Islamic festival of Ramadan that starts next Sunday. That has bumped next week's Saudi race forward by a day, and so this one too, because apparently that single day between races not that far from each other is really important. For the full Bahraini cultural experience, grab some alcohol-free beer, a mixed grill and some hummus, oppress some people you disagree with and settle down for 57 laps of the 5.4km Grand Prix circuit layout. Phil Facts! The tarmac at the Bahrain International Circuit comes from Shropshire, specifically the Baston Hill Quarry just off the A49 near Shrewsbury. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great fact! That is the most Adam Partridge this podcast has ever been. I love that. It's the specificity of what is this practice off the A49. I Shrewsbury. want to go there now. That's where the pub is. <laughs> We're going to open yeah. a real pub. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest race lap record around this track has long been held by an F1 great. That's right, Pedro de la Rosa, who powered his ample talent and a McLaren MP420 around in 1 minute 31.447 seconds back in 2005. Could it be beaten this weekend? Eh, probably not. Last year's fastest lap was by another great, Joe Guan Yu, in 1 minute 33.996, so Who? quite a lot longer. Last year's <laughs> race was won, unsurprisingly as it turned out, by Max Verstappen, followed, more surprisingly, by Sergio Perez, with Fernando Alonso in third. In terms of favourites for this year, then, it's Max Verstappen, as it will be for every race this season unless something hilarious happens and Red Bull implodes. But how much will he win by? Will Christian Horner still be in charge? And will Sergio Perez be in any way competent? As for who finishes behind Max, I think it'll be Ferrari and therefore probably Charles Leclerc. But will Carlos Sainz fight for his F1 future, ignoring team orders and working only for himself? Might as well. But will Ferrari Ferrari it up straight away, or will we have to wait until later this season? Where will Mercedes be? How shit will Alpine be? Might we notice the Saubers for a change? No. Whatever happens, the most important thing this weekend is this. You've got a free Sunday. Maybe this is the way forward. I like Sundays. I didn't know it was on Saturday until recently, and I am away this weekend, and I've got <laughs> plans that start an hour into the race, and I'm very annoyed, because I didn't think to check if the race was on a Sunday, because the races are on a Sunday. Now, I know this is Ramadan, so I'm not going to be going all well, no, the Anderson it's not. here. It's Ramadan's next week. It's not this week. Well, fuck it then. <laughs> think of the number of bank holidays have ruined. Look, I'd be happier if they put the race on a Monday, to be honest. They have done that before, right? Didn't they do that in... One year when it got rained off or something, they held it on a Monday. I, I think it that? was Fiji. It would, no, but it would be good, Fiji? wouldn't it, if it was on a week? Would you think it would be good during a week, wouldn't it? Because do you remember at school, like when England were in Euro 96 and teachers bought the TV in so you could watch the football during a, during school hours because it was during school hours. Did you ever get that? That ever happened? You could just watch races during work. Yeah, I, was, I might even have, I think if I was doing GCSEs, I would have finished school by then, probably. Ugh, yeah, we're older than you. So yeah. old. Oh, fuck you guys. Do you, you know Phil, I mean? do you remember the moon landing? I do. Oh, <laughs> what a time that was. I was just out of university. Uh, but you get my uh, point. Let's have it during the week. I'm with you. Yeah, when they will the telly in so we can all watch JFK being shot. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of, uh, in terms of my, my, pre, my predictions, bang on the money, do you reckon? Uh, Pretty much. Yeah. For Stappen, I mean, you've got to be I mad to say anyone else. I think, I think Ferrari are going to Give Sergio Perez a run for his money, which is the politest thing I can say. It's damning with faint praise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lots of good things there, guys. Yeah, yeah, lots of lots to think about. There's a huge part of me that doesn't want it to be the case. I think vast majority of F1 fans are probably feeling the same way, um, but it will be. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to be shittest though? That's the big Haas. Oh, we know that already. Yeah. Oh. Who's going to be second shittest? Alpine. Really? really? Do you think? Yeah. Haas? Fucked it. Did you say Haas? I said Haas. Oh, yeah. did you? You said Haas. Yeah, I said Haas. You know the bit when I said Haas. No, but I then. didn't. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I so heard. I think Haas will be worst. I think Alpine will be 
Thanks, Wes. Haas will be and last. And then Haas will be last. Alpine will be... can't think of anything. 19. <laughs> 19. 19. 18th. <laughs> um, and then I think... I think Williams are going to have a good one. And I think that it will be kick Sauber's sake. So I saw a little interview with Valtteri Bottas, who is looking ridiculous. <laughs> As I'm oh, sitting this. here with my, <laughs> I was going to say with his, with his <laughs> he does look hair ridiculous and though. facial hair, yeah. But he did a little kind of, uh, what do you think they're going to finish this year? And he's like, I think we're going to surprise you all, and I think he thinks they're going to do really well, and I think they won't. <laughs> Maybe they're going to surprise us by being much worse than we think they're going to be. <laughs> well, the thing is, they are. I mean, we, I mean, they are the new Audi team gearing up. So the, the, I don't know what that means in terms of this year. Money is being fed into that team, so they might not be quite as shit, or are they just waiting for Audi to hand over the keys? We are at least going to see them this year because the car is bright green. I don't want it. I don't. I'm all right with that. It's 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 my favourite livery of the year. I don't want to go with Bernie Eccleston, but I just think it's it's just not classy enough for Formula One. Oh yes, Formula One famously famously classy with the you know the vegas race and the miami race and the uh love it i think Middle all East cars ones, should yeah. be racing green and everyone should have a mustache yeah and a bow tie like mike hawthorne yeah oh and talk like this yes it's monaco oh we should do a t-shirt which we have we have done no, a monaco no, we, no, we, t-shirt no, we, you should no, buy it no we didn't do that one because we haven't we haven't done it why didn't we do it we're going to do it we might still it might be maybe for the monaco race oh Oh, I should do a t-shirt for every race. Oh, that's 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 a lot of there. t-shirts. That's more than H and M have. <laughs> <laughs> that's it from us. And the next time you hear from us will be Monday with the newsletter. If you want to sign up to that, you can head to ffwallace.com forward slash news news news. And then we'll be back next week where we'll be pouring over the nonsense that's almost definitely going to happen at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, In the meantime, you can check us out on the socials, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And we're also on YouTube as well. Make sure you take a watch. Anyway, uh, just type in for F1 sake somewhere and something will come up. Uh, Terry, where can people buy merch? ff1s.com forward slash shop 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 we've got a Ferrari Go Boom t-shirt maybe we'll need it for this weekend who knows Ferrari Go Boom thanks for listening I've been Ollie Peart goodbye goodbye